Welcome back to the show. You know, one of the key components that really ties a Thanksgiving meal together is often overlooked. We're talking about the gravy. Luckily for us, Chef Tom Douglas said he'd share his recipe with us if we visited him at his Hot Stove Society. So I have to say one of the best parts of Thanksgiving is the gravy. Mm -hmm. It goes on the turkey. It goes on the mashed potatoes. It goes in the stuffing. Yeah. So it really is the cornerstone of the whole meal. So it, to take it seriously is really smart. And a lot of people don't. You know, they'll buy it at a quart of gravy at Costco or yeah. something like that. And it's not just on the street and it's just the flavor. It's the process. You want it to, uh, to own it, right? You want it to be the most delicious thing you've ever tasted. 100%. And there's ways to get there. Okay, so right. how do we get there? Let's get the first part out of the way. So I have a beautiful uh, laurel, bay laurel uh, tree out in front of my house. Yeah, I was gonna There's, ask you, where do yeah. you get an actual branch? Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people are scared of bay, like it's too strong, Yeah. but I love it. I think a lot of the reason people end up buying the quarts of gravy at the grocery stores, because it's kind of intimidating. It is, uh, and it should be. I mean, it's not a simple process, and it's yeah. not an inexpensive process. Right. It could be inexpensive if you go cheap. Right. But, you know, uh, I'm not going cheap. I'm going all the We're way. going all in. Okay, fresh sage. We're just going to take just it. Break it off. Just break it off. Okay. And now we're making a 12, 15 pound turkey, so we're actually cooking for about 12 or 15 people. So sometimes people freak out about when they see this much butter going in. Divide by 12. And then tomorrow you want enough gravy yeah. for your hot turkey sandwich leftovers, okay? So it's only so, like a teaspoon at the most. At the most. And that's not even that much butter. And Thank then you. another layer of my flavor. Yes. Uh, I'm diligent about saving my bacon fat or my chicken schmaltz. Okay. Okay, so I've got my turkey and I've got it stuffed with my aromatics. So okay. coffee beans, sage, a little orange, a little garlic. Okay. I've got my dry rub on top. Now I'm just going to put it right on top of everything. Look at that beauty. And Bridget, my cohort here at the hot stove, has already made us oh, a turkey. Bridget, we love you. Yeah. And put it right on the platter. All right. I'm going to get rid of my bay that I put in there. OK, now, look at that. Yeah. You're going to tell me that's burnt, right? Yeah. Some people, a lot of people will tell me that that's burnt, and it's not. If you okay. say it's not burnt. It's caramelized, and the other thing it is, it's color. So there's two things that I want to get to. Okay. I want to get to almost all fat left in the bottom of my, of my pan so I can make a roux. Okay. And I want to caramelize my onions just a touch more. And the difference between a regular sauce, like a reduction of stock, mm -hmm. and a gravy is the roux. Is the thickness. It's the, th it's the thickening agent, okay. right? A regular stock like we have, we're going to use this for our gravy. Yeah. But if I reduce that down to a syrup, now I have a sauce. Right. If but I move this into this pan with a roux, now I have a gravy. Okay, it's science. It's science. <laughs> What's also happening at the same time is my onions are getting darker yeah. and darker and darker. If I saw somebody in the kitchen doing this, I'd be like, oh, wait, what it's are you burning, doing? It's, it's burning. It's burning. Yeah, exactly. It's not burning. It's caramelizing, and it's getting wow. better and better as we speak. Okay. Our flour's in. Mm -hmm. I'm incorporating the fat and the juices and the onions. And what's happening right now is that the onions are breaking down into a paste. So they're literally breaking down. They're breaking down. And now you're going to start putting in a ladle at a time of stock for me. Them. Yeah, you. Okay. Right. What do you think? I'm here to cook you dinner? No, I am your chef. Yes. I am your sous chef. If I were to just dump that whole thing of stock in there, my, my flour bits might not drop. As I'm pouring in, I can see that it's all coming off the bottom of the pan. Yeah, I'm just... It's all going into the gravy. Keep pouring. Keep going. Come on, Amity. I'm trying. Do I have to give you more wine to get yes, you to pour you more? Yes, you do. I, I probably... At this point, we could just probably Start go pouring. like that a little bit. All the salt and pepper that it has right now mm -hmm. is just dripping off from the turkey. So my guess is it's probably going to need a little seasoning. Okay. 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 So I'm just going to take my... Here, you, t you take that one. Okay. Um, That's a pretty good start. That is a good start. Yeah. It's better than most gravies I've had, and we haven't even seasoned it yet. All okay, right, so I'm going to add a little wine. I add the wine, not that it needs wine, but I like a little bit of the acid that it brings. Yeah. So I'm going to add a little bit of white wine. Not too much, of that's a good wine. <laughs> <laughs> Save that for us. So that's going to help balance the fattiness mm -hmm. of the gravy. And then now you just kind of have to let it go. Ooh, my turkey's still pretty hot. Uh -oh. But it might have a little special juices in there that I want to 
You see all those? Yes. That's that's layers of flavor on my gravy right there. You almost want to squeeze it out. I know, exactly. I like a chunky gravy. Mm -hmm. I just would just serve it like this. Okay. I don't mind if I have a strand of onion. The other thing you can do mm -hmm. is take an immersion blender. And just, well, oh. And just. And even if you don't want necessarily all of it to go away, this kind of creates a little, breaks down the bigger pieces just yeah. a bit. We are just about there. I don't okay. like an overly thick gravy. Okay. It's like a creme anglaise. In my mind, that's where I want to be. Okay, so this is about the thickness you want. Yeah. Now that. Oh my gosh. Pretty darn delicious. Now guess what? If you wow. put it on some mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. so as a kid, did you ever be the first one on the bowl? And my mom always put a big dollop of butter on the mm -hmm. top and it melted and I was like eight siblings, right? So I was just, I was there. I was going for that Did butter you get top. The you bet every time. Oh, good for you. That's awesome. All right. And here we go. That is. I, I. I think without a doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, the reports are true. We are in the presence <laughs> of a gravy god. I mean, one hundred percent. And Tom was gracious enough to share his gravy recipe with us. If you'd like to give it a shot, it's on our website right now. Or you can just text the word recipe, just the word, to 206-448-4545. We'll send the link straight to your phone. And then if you do make it, will you let us know how it turned out? Because I'm so curious. Okay, so when 